Thank you for joining us tonight. We're so glad that you're here. If you would, I want to get right into this. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord, we thank you so very much for your power, your spirit, your love that you show to each and every one of us. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us tonight as we reflect on all that you have done for each and every one of us. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. It was during the annual observance of the Jewish holiday Passover that Jesus shared the final meal prior to his crucifixion with all of his disciples. It was during this meal that Jesus instituted a ceremony to remember his work on the cross and the new covenant that it brings. We call it communion. Because through this ceremony, we reaffirm that we are sharing in this new covenant. If you have your Bibles or if you would focus on the screen, we're going to go to Luke chapter 22 and verse 7. Then the day of the unleavened bread came when the Passover lamb had to be crucified. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us so we can eat it. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked him. Listen, he said to them, When you've entered the city, a man carrying a water jug will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters. Then the owner of the house, or tell the owner of the house rather, that the teacher ask you, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished room upstairs. Make the preparation there. So they went and found it just as he told them. And they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. Then he said to them, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them, and said, This is my blood which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And verse 20. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant established by my blood. It is shed for you. Passover is the celebration which commemorates how that God delivered the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. The plan of God gave, given rather through Moses was simple. Each family was to kill a lamb. The blood was to be put on top of the doorpost and on each side of the doorpost of their home. Then the lamb was to be cooked and completely eaten by each family. The blood of the lamb protected each home from destruction. Their obedience in eating the lamb brought provision and it brought deliverance. Just as the blood of the Passover lamb brought protection over the homes and the families of those Israelites that we find out about in the word of God. It is the plan and the will of God for the blood of Jesus Christ to bring protection and blessing over our homes and our families as well. By celebrating communion in your home this evening, you are declaring that every covenant promise purchased by Christ's blood at Calvary is for you and your home and for your family. I want us to read this scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 
23, if we could, please. For I received you from the Lord, that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Tonight, I want us to begin by giving thanks. Like Jesus, we began by giving thanks in prayer. We acknowledge that we are sinners and we are given an opportunity to give thanks to Jesus Christ for salvation that he's offered to you and to me through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So right now, can you lift your voices and your hands in your house right now? Let's give him thanks. So we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to receive blessing and power and forgiveness. And Lord, you, you resurrect our life out of grossness and brokenness. And Lord, we give you thanks and we give you honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, we take this bread and we are understanding that it is the broken body of Jesus Christ, a perfect, the perfect lamb of God. He paid the ultimate price to redeem us from the curse of sin and restore us back to the covenant with him. We are so thankful that he broke himself. We are so thankful that he laid himself down and we acknowledge that he did that by taking this bread, taking this part of his body and we do it in remembrance of him. Would you take that bread right now and place it in your mouth? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, let's take the cup. We take the cup to remember the new covenant in his blood. As our Passover lamb, his blood was poured out on the cross to cover my sins and to cover your sins. We confess that because of his blood, this home is protected. This home is covered. We also acknowledge that by drinking this cup, that we have salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. Would you take this cup right now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, what I want us to do is I want us to give thanks. I want us to give, us, give thanks to Jesus Christ for that work that he did on the cross. And we need to recommit ourselves. And we need to worship him and honor him for all that he has done for us. Lord, we give you thanks and we give you honor, and we give you praise. Could you love him right now? Could you lift him up in your home? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to this earth. Thank you, Jesus, for just living for a short time and showing us how to live, oh Lord. And then, thank you, God, for going through all of the things that you went through, the flogging post. And Lord, you went to Golgotha, and you laid yourself down on a cross, Lord. And you did all of that that we might have life and life more abundantly. And Lord, in just a couple of days, Lord, we are going to celebrate, or Lord, not just a couple, Lord, in, in just two days, Lord, we are going to celebrate, Lord, a, a resurrection of you. Lord, we're going to be exalting you and thanking you, Lord, that you have forgiven us and you've given us a new lease on life, Lord. You rose again and we have life and life more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Would you cover every person, Lord, that is listening and watching tonight in your precious blood? We thank you. We honor you and we give you praise. 
praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the opportunity, Lord, to reflect and to remember, Lord, the blood that you shed. Lord, yes, it is just a plastic cup. And yes, it is just a little bit of break, uh, grape juice and some a little cracker in there. But Lord, it represents so much. Lord, it represents your broken body. It represents the blood that you shed for each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that your anointing would flow into homes right now. I pray that your anointing would flow over dads and moms, oh Lord. I pray it would flow over every single person, Lord every young person, Lord, over every child in the name of Jesus. And Lord, let a recommitment, Lord, come over them, especially in this time of, Lord, isolation. Lord, we have gotten focused and now we are recommitting our hearts and our minds to you. I pray that someone that has watched this tonight, Lord, has made a new commitment in Jesus' name. Lord, let them understand all you did, that, Lord, their sins would be forever forgiven. And Lord, they would have a new lease, a new direction, a new trajectory for their life. Lord, we honor you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God, praise God. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. I want to tell you just a couple of things. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. to all of our uh, true kids, uh, your teachers will be out in front of Truth Church and they have prepared um, baskets or, I'm sorry, bags for you with eggs inside of them. And I know it's not the same as going and having all that fun with your friends and having the helicopter drop eggs, but we want to make it as normal as possible for you to come and experience that. So I ask you to come from 10 to 11, come experience that. They put them together um, very uh, sanitary. They have put gloves on and uh, use hand sanitizer and made sure that they have done that sanitary for you to come and get that. So come and do that. And also, most importantly, this coming Sunday at 9.30 a.m., we are going to have our Easter celebration, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a time of worship and praise. And you're going to want to be here for that. But not only are we going to have it at 9.30, but we're also going to have it at 11.30. I encourage you to come and get ready for our uh, morning service at 9.30 or at 9 rather because our uh, true kids will also be having a time for your children, uh, a great fun activity like we did last week. So invite friends, share that, uh, that watch party and all of that good stuff. It's going to go live at uh, 9 o'clock and you want to be there for that for Sister Elise and her team as they celebrate the Risen King. But we cannot wait to see you on Easter Sunday morning at 9.30 or 11.30. Again, thank you for being with us tonight, and God bless.